welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and I'm your host today as we talk about natural progression. I'm really grateful to have Rachel Sherman with us today. She's a licensed massage therapist specializing in myofascial and cranial sacral. She's a beach volleyball coach and also a Pilates instructor. And we're going to have a conversation about how this progression was natural and maybe even uh, what was a catalyst that caused her to go from one step to the next to the next, as is in all of our lives. Um, Rachel, welcome. Thank you, Tish. So good to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's really great to have you. Thanks so much for taking the time today um, to be here and have this discussion. I really do just let's touch on on the volleyball coach. It's a beach volleyball coach. And I really don't know that much about that part of your life. So can you tell me how did you get started? And why did you start um, coaching? And, and what's your story? Oh, man, volleyball has been the one consistent thing in my life. I fell in love with the game when I was, I think, even in middle school. But I saw my big brother start playing volleyball in high school, and um, I just thought it was the coolest thing. I wanted to do it. Me and my uh, twin sister, we would um, try and play with him, and he hated it. But <laughs> we um, that's how I got started. That's how I fell in love with the game. I uh, started playing high school, club, college. Um, it's one of those sports, um, when you fall in love with a sport, you fall in love with the sport. It's my passion in life. I, I truly love playing the sport. I love coaching the sport. I started coaching when I was 19 years old. Um, I had, um, mm. yeah, it was interesting. I had a break in my college education. Um, I had played in college, uh, the first couple of years. And when I took my break, they needed a high school coach, freshman coach position opened up and I slid right in there. So I started coaching at 19, a kid coaching kids. And, uh, you know, I've just been coaching ever since. So I started indoor. We didn't have a lot of beach, um, where I came from, uh, in Indiana. So, uh, but I did start to play beach in Indiana when I moved to Arizona, played a bit more beach over there. Um, and I really got into beach when I moved here about um, 11 years ago. Um, really fell in love with the game. Beach game is so different. There's a lot of strategy. There's only two players on the court. Um, it's very mental and very physical um, all together. And um, it, it's just so such an intriguing sport. It's so fun to, to play and watch. So I started coaching uh, beach here as well as indoor. I coached at, at HPU, Hawaii Pacific University, for six years. I got my undergr uh, my graduate degree there coaching the team um, as an assistant coach. Um, but then I fully have now transitioned to coaching beach at the Outrigger Canoe Club um, program. So. Oh, that's, that's awesome. We love our Outrigger Canoe Club. And that is right on the beach, too. So, um, I would like to touch base. I mean, it sounds to me like you've really mastered this craft of this passion in a in a game. It's pretty uh, demanding physically and, as you mentioned, mentally and emotionally and all of the things. So what is it that you would what is it that you would say is maybe part of how you moved? from the playing and the coaching into your Pilates career? Yeah. So it was about five, maybe six years ago now. Uh, my body, you know, was tired of all the years of jumping and moving and in intense um, activities. I, I wasn't just a beach volleyball player or indoor. I rock climbed. I you know, I was an outdoor enthusiast in the ocean all the time. So um, I had lower back issues, uh, shoulder issues. And I realized, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this the rest of my life. Um, so I decided I need a gentler, more um, kind approach to 
um, taking care of my body and wellness. And um, I learned about a um, woman who needed Pilates instructors. And she was willing to train Pilates instructors for her, her new studio. So I jumped right on that opportunity and I said, this is it. This is for me. I had done Pilates um, in the past. You know, when I was younger, I'd look up videos or whatever. And, and I was in the best shape of my life when I was playing beach volleyball, uh, climbing and doing my Pilates. This was when I was younger. So I was like, it just made sense for me to go back to Pilates um, and connect with that now that I can't be as intense as I used to be. <laughs> So it was more, there wasn't actually a, like a catalyst, so to speak, as like one major event. It was just, you just sort of started feeling yourself going, hmm, I'm having little aches and pains and things of that nature. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, I want to bring up the repetitive motion because I know that in, in what I do with people is people will come in and they constantly like they have aches and pains or ailments and usually it's because they're doing something over and over and over again. And um, what would those things? How do you? What do you? What's your take on repetitive motion and how do you help people like kind of break those patterns or if they're not in a place where they're going to stop doing something? How do they remedy that so that they can keep doing the things that they love? Yeah, I learned over the years, um, a lot of it's experiential, um, but then also I, I, I have a lot of formal education that has confirmed these ideas for me. Um, but you're right, we get into these patterns, you know, we, volleyball is a lot of overhead, one-sided, and we go into a spiral kind of, you know, um, and a lot of things in our life are like that. Um, and I say cross training, um, using your body in different ways, maybe, maybe not completely different. Like, you know, I actually trained for a marathon one year and it completely changed my volleyball game because I'm training my slow twitch muscles now instead of my fast twitch muscles. But, you know, changing cross training in say weightlifting or rock climbing or something else in some yoga, Pilates. Um, getting a different range of motion so it's not the same thing uh, day in, day out. Um, because time, gravity, our tendencies, our physical body, we get into these patterns and we just, we have to do something different or even do the opposite. So if I always pick up my bag with my right shoulder or with my right arm, every once in a while, not every once in a while, but do half and half. You know, you, you find that you're in a pattern of picking it up here every other time just the other arm you know every single thing that we do just bringing awareness to the daily things that brings yeah. up a question for me have you ever trained anybody to serve with their other their non-dominant hand <laughs> not serve because that is a you want to be the best you can with that movement but there are things that we treat the, or teach them to do ambidextrously yes Absolutely. Yeah. So I was thinking because a lot of times I have golfers come in and I'm like, well, can you just, you know, put your other foot forward? They're like, you're crazy. I don't know. I don't know who you are. And I figure maybe that'd be like surfing, right? If you're goofy footed all of a sudden trying to go regular. I mean, the pros do it. But. <laughs> it's such a complex thing. It's the it's a whole body movement and a whole everything has to go together. So to just to completely flip it is really difficult. But we have things like where we teach them to pivot open both ways, or we teach them to touch the ball with both arms, right? Those are more simple things. It's not as complex as like taking a full on approach and swing, right? Or, or just even swing, honestly. But I had to be kind of ambidextrous at some point because I hurt my shoulder. So, but I'm not nearly as strong with my left as I'm bringing with my right. Right. So when it really comes down to it, like with a game or something like that when the performance is happening you want to use what what you've been trained from the beginning to do what naturally comes to you absolutely but that's why we also train with the other the other side as well we really do and then when um when we can't go to our strong side we still have an option versus not having any option right 
because mm-hmm. you want to practice it somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what does, let's, let's move into like the mental game, right? I know that, and we're talking about volleyball right now and repetitive motion, but um, I feel like this is relative to all parts of our life. So what kind of a mental game uh, do you have with volleyball or with sports in general? I mean, with Pilates, with yoga, with surfing, with volleyball, have you noticed that like how this has contributed to like, say, and how it contributes to um, the healing of an injury and both answer both questions. <laughs> Awareness is a huge thing that I become um, a big proponent of. Um, when I started training in my Pilates, my instructor was really good at um, focusing on bringing awareness to all your movements. Uh, I have since taken that into my beach volleyball training with my kids. Um, if you know, if you're aware of your body um, and you make a mistake, right? and you're aware of what happened in that moment, then you can actually think about it, analyze it, change it for the future. Have you ever coached somebody to like almost have a mantra in their head of saying like, okay, so just um, think, I know even when, way back when I got into an accident, or oh no, here's a great example. When I two times, I think in my life, but somebody always told me, keep your head down, keep your head down, keep your head down. Right. And so whenever I went to hit the ball, I was like, okay, keep my head down, keep my head down, keep my head down. Is there anything like mentally that you try to get your, uh, your kids to do, or even in Pilates where it's like, okay, stabilize your hip or okay, you know, set your shoulder or your, I don't know. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Um, in every, um, skill like passing or bumping the ball setting the ball hitting the ball in every skill there is um techniques to keep in mind and we um what they say rep it out you know you rep out the skill you know you do you repeat that same movement over and over again so it becomes automatic so at first you're thinking about the movement but you rep it out it becomes automatic um and then definitely you've got to train um the mind um, and the body so that it becomes uh, automatic. But then that's where the um, cross training comes in, uh, doing other activities so then you can free up the range of motion. It's not the same thing over and over again. Right, because automatic can be good and automatic can be bad, right? <laughs> good. <laughs> right. Great. So um, what about emotions? How do emotions play a part in this game? Like, how do, say, If you've got, you know, fear, or if you're not feeling confident, or you don't feel like you belong, or that's that side of the emotions, or you feel like you are on top of the world, or like you're, you know, how have you seen that play a part in (laughs) not just, not just volleyball, but also in like the Pilates and the healing and everything that you've gotten into? How does? Absolutely. Um, In sports, you know, the the older we get, the more mature we get, the more sure we are with who we are. You know, this is just in general in life. It's the same thing in in athletics and sports. Um, The younger the, the player, the more emotions that go they go through you know they have fear they have insecurity they you know all the things and you see it in their body language you see it in their face and every time i said you can't show that you you have to um fake it till you make it 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 is a huge thing because if you put your head down you're gonna make a mistake you just are you've got to keep your head up even if inside you're not feeling confident huge um, and then in wellness, in, in Pilates, um, in healing, I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with others. You have to believe that it's possible. You can't think, oh my gosh, this is the end. Uh, this is horrible. It, there's a certain level of 
acceptance that you have to have and kindness and gentleness, gentleness with yourself about where you're at. Um, so definitely if, if you go too hard at something, uh, you're bound to come to a wall, right? You have to be gentle. You have to be open. You have to be accepting of where you are and then gradually get through the, the process. I love that you bring up this point, this point of acceptance and having grace with ourselves and, um, and being able to move through it as a process. It's not just a one and done event with a volleyball game, with a Pilates um, practice, or even with healing. Uh, I, I know that I personally go through so many different levels with healing and um, it's like this, it's, it's the journey, it's a marathon, right? It's not a short race. So thank you for bringing that up. And, and I feel like with that grace and with that patience, that's, it brings me to another point. Like, how do you find patience in working with if your students working with your Pilates clients and, you know, with the people who come to you for healing with cranial sacral and, and myofascial work? That's a great question. And that's something I've had to learn over the last number of years. Uh, it's been quite a journey to work with people and learn people. I've, I've, learned that you have to understand where that person is coming from, what motivates them, what, what fears do they have, um, what are their expectations, right? And this is coaching, this is Pilates, this is um, massage, this is therapy, um, because you have to be on the same page as your, your client or your athlete. You, you have to. You have to reach them on the level where they're at. Are they more um, intellectual, mental? Are they more emotional? Are they more um, concerned about their physical, um, you know, state? And you've got to meet them there. And then if I see something that I need to add in to help promote their training or their healing, I try to somehow find a way to relate it to their values. So coming up with that, those common goals. And setting that at the beginning of a training or the beginning of a coaching session or the beginning of, you know, a healing session, uh, that is key so that you know where they're wanting to go and then you know where you can serve them. That's such a great point. So if anybody's looking for a coach or for a Pilates instructor or someone to do work with them on a healing level, that's something that if your um if your coach or your healer, your instructor don't bring that up, it's important for you to be able to take charge of that and express that. That's such a great point, Rachel. And um just I'm really grateful that you brought that up so that we can empower people to be able to take that into their own hands. So many times we go into these sessions and we don't um, feel like we can speak up. And it's really important that we do that power back because it is our growth that is what's, is it, is what's happening. So thank you so much for that. And with the, um, with the cranial sacral, like, Cranial sacral and myofascial, I know for a fact that takes a long time for things to unwind. How, what was your training like with that? Were there any things that came up for you that were either um, just profound? Do you have any profound experiences with the cranial sacral or with the myofascial work? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> um, yeah, the training was very cool. It's all hands-on. I uh, did the training with John F. Barnes in Sedona, Arizona. Amazing man, amazing teacher. 
and it was all hands on. And he would talk us through each um, procedure. Um, and it was all just time based. Like you have to give it time. You have to be patient. And he would talk us through, um, you know, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes of holding the same pose. And you're just, you're just sitting there. You're just in it. You're just present because that's how he makes you feel. And it was such a good training. Um, profound, yes. I, I opened up to a level that I'd never experienced before in those trainings and I'm getting emotional, which I don't usually, but it really opened my eyes to what being gentle to you with yourself can do and letting go and releasing. And we all need that. We all hold and embrace um, all day, every day. And I just want to share and let, with people and let them know that it's okay to let go and relax, you know, because <laughs> it's so important for all of us. So, yeah, and I have some pretty pr profound experiences. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. So much for your vulnerability and um i i want to mention that with these tears like i spent a good portion of my life feeling like the tears that i i shed were a sign of weakness and mm -hmm. i've learned and grown into this knowing that that's actually strength and it helps us to be able to connect with one another and um, just being able to show that vulnerability shows me that you're going to be able to sit with my vulnerability you're going to be able to sit with my tears you're going to be to create the space that's safe for me to be able to have that same release um, whether there's actual emotions attached to it or not, maybe it's just crying. Um, I know I had a, a myofascial experience and um, all of a sudden, all of these tears started coming and I did not have a lot of angst with it. There wasn't sadness, there wasn't fear, there wasn't abandonment, there wasn't anything attached to the tears they were just tears flowing and flowing and I knew that that release had to happen and you actually were the facilitator of that release and I just want to um, recognize and acknowledge how grateful I am for the space that's created uh, to be able to allow people to have those releases and if you don't if you're not able to be comfortable with your vulnerability, you can't create that. So I just want to acknowledge that in you and also to remind our viewers that this is one of those things that you want to look for in a therapist, in a coach, in a friend, <laughs> right? Someone who can be vulnerable with their own process and their own growth because that's really what creates the healing so mahalo mahalo rachel for that you're welcome and, and thank you for being open and vulnerable and allowing me into that space of yours it's truly a special thing right so it's that reciprocity right? That reciprocity that just, it happens. And, you know, that brings me to one of the um, last points, even though it's a ginormous point of listening, right? So, so I've taught so many therapists how to do um, different techniques and modalities and such. And the one thing that I've always taught them first and told them, no matter what, whether you get this technique perfect or not, if you don't learn how to listen, it's all for naught. And um, I'd like you to maybe talk a second about 
about listening, it sounds like in your cranial sacral training, that's I mean, maybe that's why you're great with the myofascial. Maybe that's why you're such a great um, influence with healing in your massage and the things that you do is because you listened at such, you learned how to listen at such an early stage in the game. Yeah. Um, it did start honestly with Pilates and bringing that awareness to the body. Awareness to your breathing. How does your breathing connect to your body? How does your 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 extremities connect to your core. I, I started learning that at that moment. Um, and then after I started my Pilates, I wanted to, I felt drawn to put my hands on people and help them. And I was like, I need, I need training in this. I went to the myofascial training. Um, and even there, it's even more awareness and bringing awareness to others. Um, and then after that, I was like, okay, I have this myofascial training, I have Pilates training, but I don't have a license to touch anybody. So now I need a license to touch. So I go through my massage therapy school and it, it was just a very natural progression. It just felt, everything fell into place. It was just all so right. And um, it, it was a personal journey that taught me, brought me to this place of awareness and gentleness. And yeah. I love that. And I mean, look at how easy that was for you to be able to say it was just a natural progression that one thing fell into place right after the other. And I feel like maybe that's how we wrap this up is that when things just fall into place naturally, one after the other, and for us to be able to recognize that and see that as a gift and see that as a healing in our journey of life and growth then that natural progression is actually an indication that you're you're on the right track. You know, you're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. Earth and sky and all of the things are rising up and basically paving your path and helping you along the way. So I'm just really grateful that you took the time out today to be able to share your heart and to be able to share your journey. And um, if people would like to contact you for any kind of work, do you have a website or something that they can? I do. I do have a website. It's called wellnesswithrachelhigh.com. Um, and it displays uh, my story, um, everything that I offer, uh, massage, Pilates, and beach volleyball training. I actually do some beach volleyball workouts as well, uh, Pilates in the park. So um, please visit me at um, wellnesswithrachelhigh.com and my, all my contact information is there. I love it. Thank you again. Thank you so, so much. And Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And we'll do it again. I can't wait to see you the next time I see you. Me too. Look forward to it. Thank you so, so much to Think Tech. So for creating this platform for us to be able to have these kinds of conversations that people are looking for in their life. And um, if you liked what you heard today and you'd like to check out more Think Tech Hawaii episodes on different subjects, go ahead and like and subscribe and that will give you notifications so that you can get more of what you're looking for. I'm Tish, Letitia Sharp, and I wish you all all a beautiful, wonderful, prosperous, growth healing kind of day. Mahalo.